Good morning, people of God. This is Minister Jay, and welcome to another exciting episode of Table Talk. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about remembering the past struggles. And let's get right into it, people. The Apostle Paul wrote, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's in Philippians 4. Oh, so I say, sorry, Philippians chapter 3, 13, verses 13 and 14. We often misinterpret this to mean that you should literally forget your past, forget the trauma, forget the pain, forget the hurt, forget the abuse, forget the betrayal, forget the abandonment, forget it all. But hear me on this. That's not what Paul is advising. See, it's so easy, you know, for people to say, let go and let God, you know, and, you know, it's easy to do that, you know. It's, you know, let go, let God. You don't forget those things, man, that you went through. You don't forget none of that stuff, man. But you don't dwell on it, man. You don't allow it to become something to the point where it hinders your walk in life with Christ, man. Or it, it, it causes you to stay in a bitter state of mind, man. Eventually, you're going to have to grow out of it, man. Now, hear me on this. That's not what Paul is advising. Paul wasn't talking about forgetting his past struggles. He was talking about forgetting his past victories. Hmm. That's interesting there. He wasn't talking about forgetting his past pain. He was talking about forgetting his pride and his boasting in his accomplishments. Just a few verses earlier, he listed all the things he could boast in, all his victories and accomplishments, his accolades, statuses, and successes. What he's trying to say here is that his past identities are nothing compared to his identity in Christ. Praise God. Amen. Don't take this verse out of context and use it as an excuse to avoid looking back, to avoid grieving, to avoid healing. This is our powerful reality. You have to deal with your past to be free from your past. Let me read that again, because this is this, this is powerful now. This is powerful here. You have to deal with your past to be freed from your past. Now, how do you do that? How is that possible, guys? How is that possible? They hurt, they hurt me so bad. They did this. They did that. They mistreated me. They, God, they betrayed me. They did, God, how am, I supposed to, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to get past this? There could be some things in your past that are keeping you stuck today. Oh, my God. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. The things that was in my past that was keeping me stuck, that kept me in the state of mind that I was in, was remembering the nine-year-old kid that I was. Was remembering the 17-year-old kid that I was. Remembering everything that was done to me and, and holding on to all of that bitterness. Holding on to all of that, 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 that animosity. You know, just just... Not letting it go, just holding on to it, you know. And, and, and as I said in times past, that you're holding on, it's like you, unforgiveness is like you drinking poison and waiting for somebody else to die. Nobody told me to hold on to all of that stuff, though. Nobody told me I had to keep hold of that. What my parents did, what this person did, what this person did, what this person said, nobody told, us, told me to hold on to that. I volunteered to hold on to all of that, man. This is our powerful reality. You have to deal with your past to be free from your past. You have to deal with it to be free from it. How do you deal with it? This could be some things in your past that you keeping you stuck today. Our emotional responses. In the, presence are, in the present are often rooted in emotional wounds from the past. Let's, let's, let's read this again. Our emotional responses in the present are often rooted in emotional wounds from the past. Hmm. One way to get to the root of our emotional health is to make a timeline. Write down significant events from your earliest memories all the way to the day. That's why I'm writing this book, guys. Because that's that that's my book is pretty much based on what he's saying right here to make this timeline. My book is pretty much a timeline of all of the stuff that I dealt with in the past up to the present. And not only is this is this stuff designed for this, but it's 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 all a testimony is part of my life, man, and how God came in and transformed and changed my life, man. 
Many times God has called me to do his work and his will. And many times I have ran. And every time I ran from God, all of the things that was in my past came back to haunt me. All that stuff came back to haunt me, man. That stuff came to really haunt me and bother me. And it changed my mind. It changed my attitude. It changed my actions. I mean, I started going through depression. I started thinking suicidal things. I I started doing all these things, man, because... I did not understand myself either. I didn't understand myself, man. You know, those those past experiences, things that I can still remember in my mind, I don't forget those things, but I don't dwell on them either. Write down significant events from your earliest memories all the way to today and note experiences that shape you for both good and bad. See, the things that happened that, that made me, that, that shaped me for the good and the bad, those are the things that I'm reflecting on, you know, how this, what, what was done to me and how this affected me in my life today. Okay, then look at, look for things that come up frequently in your life. You're looking for emotional responses that came up without your awareness. Hmm. Things that I wasn't aware of. You're looking for patterns. We're identifying roots. See, I've already figured mine out. Mine was every time I, every time that I thought I had this under control, every time I left God, I failed every single time. Every single time. Every time I left God, when I left him, I failed every time. And I've always gotten in some, some mess and he always seemed to come and rescue me. He always found a way to come rescue me, man. As a therapist, I use this process with my clients. When Carla engaged in a timeline activity, an interesting theme emerged. The fear of abandonment. I've been there. I know what that felt like. I was abandoned as a nine-year-old kid. Okay? Here I am, 41 years old, and still feeling that, 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 um, that, that, the spirit of abandonment. That spirit of abandonment. My wife, prime example. I know what that feel like to be abandoned by my mother, by my father, by my significant other. That's that, and I wrote about that. That fear of abandonment, man. That's the that fear of being abandoned, being rejected, being neglected. All of these things that happened to me as a nine-year-old kid happened to me again here, even now at age forty-one. Even now. Even now. But Psalm 27 and 10 told me that though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So those fears of abandonment, those fears of rejection, those fears of neglect, those fears of being unwanted, that stuff has no place in my mind now. It's not to say that it's, that it's not there knocking at the door to overtake me because, yes, it's there. I felt it. I know what it felt like to be abandoned. I felt that. I know what that felt like. And I still have that feeling. But you know what? I don't have to deal with it anymore because I know one thing. One person has not abandoned me. And that's God. He's never abandoned me. I left him. He never left me. He never left me in no instances. He always was here for me. When everybody else left me, when everybody else cast me to the side, when everybody else wrote me off, God was here the whole time. And you know what? He also told me to forgive those very people who abandoned me, who rejected me, who neglected me, who did not want me, who wrote me off. He told me, look, forgive them. This is why I am the way I am today. Praise God. She had a fear. She had her fears of abandonment. Her first significant memory was when her mom walked out on the family. Sounds familiar? Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? There was no explanation. She just knew that she and her dad were on their own. My dad did the best job he could to take care of us, but he had his issues too. No, he did the best job he could to take care of us, but he had his issues too. Another experience she noted was dating her first boyfriend. She felt lucky. He noticed her, but he was not invested in the relationship. She felt a desperation to make sure he stayed and gave everything to keep him close. Serving, 
forgiving, initiating, and doing it over and over again. Eventually, he broke up with her. Carla was devastated. How do you think I feel? I feel the same way right now today. As I speak to you guys, I, speak, I feel the same way right now today. Right now. Today. As I speak to you guys, this is how I'm feeling right now today. I know what that feeling felt like, man. I, I'm still feeling it in a sense. But I know God is always there. You know, being separated, man. I know what that felt like. Okay, now. We began to notice this pattern throughout her life. Fear of abandonment. That was a pattern that was in my life. That, that, that was one of my biggest fears. Being abandoned again. Being rejected. Being neglected. Feeling unwanted, not cared for. But see, how can I how can I say these about somebody else doing this when I didn't even have these things for myself? I didn't have none of this for myself, guys. I didn't have none of this for myself, man. Wow. And it goes to say this. Your patterns may not be as obvious as Carla's, but let me assure you that there are. Patterns emerge in how you interact, feel, think, or behave. Paul encourages us to identify, examine, and face these patterns because the only way we can successfully move forward when we have successfully looked back. We can look back at those things and we can say, hey, yeah, that happened. I always tell people, regardless of what happened in your past, you might have done that, but you are not that. No matter what it is that you've done, you might have done that, but you are not that. Look at me, guys. I'm sitting here preaching the gospel, talking to you guys about the Lord and everything, and here I am, separated from my wife, guys. Let's, be, let's tell the truth here. Let's tell the truth, guys. I have nothing to... Hide and tell you guys, yes. Yes, I am. Does it hurt? Yes, it does hurt. Trust me, it hurts. I want alone to be with, with the family that I helped build, you know. But this had to happen, guys. This had to happen because this is the only way that God can get my attention by pulling me away from the things that I spent most of my time with. Her the cars, and all this other stuff that did not give God any glory, guys. I can look back on those things and say, you know what? Yeah, I done that, but I ain't that. So yeah, guys, let's get into, um, let's get into some scriptures here. Um, let's get into the scriptures here. We're going to read in Philippians chapter 3. We'll read Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, all the way through. Let's read it. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, prosecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless see he's talking about see paul was boasting about all of these past achievements and the things that he'd done yeah i did this now i can talk about the same thing yeah i went to college i got an education i'm this and that i can speak the same boastful things like paul said see but the thing about it is this man all that means nothing now all that don't mean anything now nothing but what things were gained to me these I counted loss for Christ. See, all that stuff don't mean nothing now. All the accomplishments and achievements that I have done, all that I counted for loss for Christ now. Because guess what? God did not really receive any glory in any of that stuff that I've done. He got no glory for that. I didn't give him any glory. Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss 
of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness, which is from God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren. I do not count myself to be apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to the things which are ahead. The things that's behind, those past accomplishments, man. Getting past those past accomplishments, those things that did not glorify God. Not talking about the past pains and the past sufferings and all that. Yeah, I went through all that. I don't forget any of that stuff, but I'm talking about the past accomplishments that I had, man. Counting all that stuff is lost that I may gain Christ, man. That I may gain Christ. Wow. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Verse 17. Brethren, joining in following my example and note, those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. An example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. They, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Got to watch out now, people. Whose end is, this, is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. Who set their mind on earthly things, and I have been so guilty of that. Yes. Very guilty of that. Our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There's no turning back with this now, guys. I can't afford to turn back. I cannot afford to turn back right now, guys. This is not this. This is not an option here. I can't afford to. I cannot afford to turn back right now, guys. This is the, This is very serious to me now, man. I've made a whole bunch of changes and transformations in my life, man, concerning the Lord. And right now, I don't have time to play games, man. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Hey, God. So, guys, I want to thank you for another exciting episode of Table Talk, guys. I hope you guys got something out of this, man. And remember, man, the past struggles has nothing to do with what you're doing right now, guys. So, even though you're going through struggles uh, and, the, and those past struggles are trying to come back, I understand this, guys. I want you to understand this. I want y'all to understand something here, man. Understand this. We all have past struggles, man. That affects our our present and our future, man. The thing is, God is telling us to not dwell on these things, man. We don't forget none of that stuff, man. But what Paul here was saying in this whole thing was about, hey, your past accomplishments and achievements, 
Count all that stuff rubbish, man. Count all of that stuff rubbish, okay? So I hope you guys got something out of this, man. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and to listening to this episode of Table Talk, man. I will be back with more for you guys, and I will pray that the Lord be with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed day, guys.